Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I'm uh, heading to my uh, local home game right about now. I'm gonna go play some $25 poker. Um, yeah, follow me in my journey. Will my sand turn to gold or will I lose it all? All right, vlog, so uh, I arrived at the home game. They didn't have any cards, so we had to go buy cards. Got some sunglasses too. So uh, hopefully I play good in these things. I think they look pretty dope, but yeah. All right, so one of the first big hands of the night, we looked down at seven two offsuit, seven of spades, two of hearts. We're in the small blind, we're playing six handed with 25 cent, 25 cent blinds and everyone limps around. So thus far it's a family pot gets to me in the small blind and I bump it up to 150. And for those of you who don't know, we are playing the 7-2 offsuit game, which means if you win a hand with 7-2 offsuit, everyone at the table pays you a dollar, which means there's a little added incentive to get in their bluff and, you know, play this monster of a hand for what it really is. So when I make it 150, big blind under the gun and button all call. So we're going four ways to a flop with 650 in the middle. So the flop comes 10 of diamonds, 7 of clubs, and the king of diamonds. And I'm out of the small blind. I pretty quickly raised to 225 with my main intention of just taking this for three streets. You know, it's a $25 game. If I lose my stack trying to bluff with seven deuce, such is life. Um, it's a fun little game, and I'm here to gamble. So following this bet, the big blind and the button fold. And the under the gun player sticks along here, calls the 225. Uh, you can have a variety of things here. Flush draws top pair, second pair. Considering he limped under the gun, his range isn't particularly strong. Um, and overall, I think that I have a decent chance getting him off whatever he has going to further streets. So the turn comes the king of clubs. And for the most part, I thought that this was a good turn card for me. Because it makes it less likely he can have top pair, which would now be trips. Um, the flush draw missed, and given that he limped pre-flop, it's much less likely that he has a strong king. Um, I do know this player pretty well, and for the most part, he does raise his strong hands pre-flop. So given all of this, I went ahead and bet 550 on the turn, roughly half pot. I thought that this bet would likely fold out all of his missed flush draws, as well as some 10x, some 7x, and overall, I thought for the most part, this bet would get the job done. Um, however, he went ahead and raised to $12, which was a really weird size considering that he had like seven or eight bucks back and, you know, the stack to pot ratio, like it wasn't even a full pot size bet for the river. Um, so I pretty quickly just went ahead and folded, showed the bluff. Yeah, on to the next hand, I guess. All right, so after my agonizing defeat with 7-2 offsuit, few hands go by. I added on for another $25, so now I have $35, 40 bucks in my stack. We've added one more player to the table, so we're now playing seven-handed, and I look down at 10 of diamonds, 10 of clubs for pocket 10s. I see some aggressive action in front of me when under the gun player raises to $1.50, and the plus one player calls over to the cutoff, the cutoff three bets to $3.50, and because I'm on the button, I'm a little bit tilted, I have position, and I have a good hand, I decide to 4-bet pocket 10s. In hindsight, I don't necessarily think that this is the smartest play. Uh, I think cold calling the 3-bet is a little bit better. Um, but at the same time, you also want to isolate with your good pocket pairs. And if I call the 350, I think I'm going to see a lot of callers behind, and you don't really want to play pocket 10s multi-way. So I decide to 4-bet. Following this, the under-the-gun player cold calls my 4-bet for $7. The plus-1 player folds, and the cutoff player goes all in for $22.75 on top of the 7, so $29.75 altogether. So at this point, I'm in a pretty, pretty tough spot for the most part. On one hand, it's pretty obvious that the cutoff player has a very, very strong hand. Something like ace-king, aces, kings, or queens. Uh, potentially 7-deuce as well, because I do think he is a good enough player. He can find a 7-2 all-in bluff here, given that there is a bounty on that hand. 
But on the other hand, you know, there's already a lot of dead money in there. I'm pretty sure that the under the gun player cold calling the four bet shouldn't really be a strong hand that often. I think he's a good player, and for the most part, if he had a monster, he would probably just five bet jam himself. So I didn't really give him credit for having a good enough hand here. So that being said, I do think that the price is right to go ahead and call this all in and pray that we're up against a hand like ace-king or 7-2. Moments after I call the all-in, the under-the-gun player also calls the all-in pretty quickly, which certainly can't be good for me. Um, he is exactly 2275 as well behind, so we decide to run things twice for $91.25 in the middle, and here's the run out. So as it turns out, the under-the-gun player cold called the 4-bet with pocket jacks, and the original all-in player from the cutoff went all-in with ace-king suited. I believe it was hearts. So two, uh, two pretty standard hands here, and overall we're in really tough shape in terms of getting it all-in really bad here. I don't do the full board, right? Or yeah, the full board. I'll take that one. Six? That's me. Eight. That's a wow. straight, right? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah, nice hand. I'll take that one. Do I burn or no? That's why I'm the best, guys. Yeah, Sorry. burn. That's me. Wow. No way. That's fucked. King. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's wow. Fucked. I still win. Chop. No, I win that. I have a boat. Oh my god. You're oh. Right. We're not <laughs> needed. We're both. Yeah. So as you can see here, we actually won both runouts with pocket tens up against pocket jacks and ace king. First board to a uh, straight. Second board was a full house. And you know, we rub it in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You what suck. You suck. <laughs> you got the worst hand in. You're the worst hand. <laughs> Get it in bad and suck <laughs> out, boys. Jiggity's never fucked. At this next hand, I got queen seven of spades. I raise it to a dollar. And I get three calls. Button, small blind, big blind, all come along. Four dollars in the middle. I see a flop of ace, king, jack. Pretty good for my range. Pretty bad for everybody else's range. I go ahead and bet a dollar after they check to me, and the button and the big blind call. Turn comes the magical ten of hearts. After the small blind checks it back to me again, I go ahead and bet six dollars. I have a straight. I'm going to bet my hand for value. The button folds, and it gets back over to the small blind, who calls the six. River pairs the board, another ten. Not really worried about that at all. All of his sets would have raised at some point, either pre-flop or now. Um, so pretty clear value bet. I bet $15. It called pretty quickly, and we're good against whatever he had. Nice little pot there. This next hand was an interesting one. We looked down at nine of spades, nine of clubs, all black pocket nines. Good hand to see. We got an under-the-gun limp, and then a plus one three bet to 75 cents. I four bet to 225, and folds back around to the plus one, and he calls the 225. Flop comes 8-5 deuce with two spades, so we have an over to the board. Obviously, really good flop for us. Our opponent leads into us here for 350. I pretty quickly jam. I just assume he has like a decent hand. He's only got like five, six bucks back. So I jam all in. He calls. We run it twice, and here's the footage. I'm all in. And we're up against ace, deuce of hearts, flop bottom pair. He decided to go with it. We're running it twice. First board. You see the six of clubs. And the king of hearts. So we're good there. Second run out coming in just a second. And it's the ten of diamonds followed by the jack of diamonds. So we win both run outs. Nice pot for us. This next hand I'm playing, I have $180 in the stack. I'm up a lot. I decided to straddle. So I put 50 cents in, blind, generous donation from me. I know, I'm the best. The under the gun player decides to limp. The button squeezes to 150. I call with pocket threes, devious intentions. I want to set mine. So we're going to go ahead and do that. The uh, original limper comes along as well, so we're going three ways to a flop here. A hand too, right? Yeah. Flop top set, we're going to check for deception. <laughs> that was a lie. I didn't flop top set. 
The flop is 6, 10, 4, rainbow. I go ahead and check. The plus one player also checks. And the original raiser bets 150 here. I uh, don't really see how he can connect super well on this board. Um, given he raised to 150, he's not going to have like 6, 10 suited or something like that. So I go ahead and call. I'm a little suspicious. And the plus one player folds. The turn comes the 10 of hearts. Really good card for us. Makes it less likely he's value betting a 10 because there's two of them out there now. Not just one, but two. So we go ahead and check again, and he checks back. And when he checks back the turn here, I really was quite confused. I honestly thought it was super weak, and knowing this player, I think he would value bet his 10s almost all the time here. The hands that I put him on were some sort of pocket pair, um, maybe an over pair, but I just thought he was weak. So when the river comes, the four of spades double pairing the board. I thought that this was a pretty good opportunity to go ahead and bluff, considering we now have zero showdown value, and I think my opponent is somewhat capped in terms of what he can really have. So we rip it all in. Good luck us. Can oh. Jordan too. You're good. Oh. We get absolutely snapped off. He's got about 20 bucks back, so we lose a pretty, pretty hefty pot here. But uh, in hindsight, I think I do like my bluff. It's a little aggressive, but... I do think it will work a lot of the time. He ended up showing pocket queens for the win. Queens. <laughs> Playing the board. Get that. That's one. a good loss for you to film. This next hand, I'm somewhere in the middle position. I look down at King Jack offsuit. We got an under the gun limp, and I quickly raise to 150. And the small blind, the big blind, and under the gun all call. So we got six dollars in the pot. Going four ways to a flop. Flop comes ace, king, jack. A little pro tip for you guys. If you want to win in poker, you have to hit your flops. And we certainly did that here. We flopped two pair against three other opponents, so we're certainly going to put some money in. Under the gun leads for 150, which is a really weird thing to do, considering I was the pre-flop aggressor. So that being said, we raise to 550. The small blind cold calls are 550 and then everyone else folds. We're going heads up with the small blind to the turn. The turn comes the six of hearts. For the most part, it's a pretty good uh, brick turn card. Not really anything too concerning going on with this turn. There is a chance of like some ace six hand out of the small blind getting there, but for the most part, I'm not very worried. I go ahead and bet $17 after the small blind check to me, and he's in a tough spot. After some deliberation, he decided to fold, and he later told me that he folded a bad ace. So in hindsight, I think I probably could have bet smaller here, something like, I don't know, 8 to $10 to possibly get a call from that. But it's always good to put as much money in as you can with these really good hands, especially when you're playing a small stakes cash game with a bunch of your friends. So uh, I'm not too worried about it, but like I said, could have gone smaller. Boys, just cashed out 141, was in for 50, so plus 91 on the night. Had some good hands, felt like I played pretty well. The Spider Man glasses treated me well, and just overall a good poker sesh. That's all I got for you. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos.